it's difficult to reclaim this land because it's basically nearly all sand. There's hardly any organic matter here and it's very bright. The, the sunshine is very intense, it gets very hot. There's hardly any water around and also there are traces of um, toxic metals in the soil. Yet tropical trees might still be persuaded to grow here once again. Sue sees on the case with a groundbreaking experiment. It relies on the fact that at least something's tough enough to grow here. Acacia mangium. Our aim here is to establish a diptrocarp plantation in the future, but to do that we need to first um, improve the site and we are doing that by planting this acacia mangium which will uh, act as a nurse species where it will provide some shade for the young diptrocarp seedlings and also organic matter. When the seedlings have become trees, the scientists will take out rows and plant diptrocarps between them. The acacias are working in partnership with mycorrhizal fungi. Mycorrhizas can protect plants from metal toxicity. But it's not just about survival of individual trees, but establishing an entirely new wood-wide web. Mycorrhizas are absolutely essential in such degraded sites because then uh, the plant can get access to water and nutrients which otherwise it would not be able to obtain. And especially on such sites where phosphorus would be a limiting factor, that's where the mycorrhizas play a very, very important role. But can they help scientists to jump-start a forest? Well, I mean, if you try to plant diptrocarps on a uh, degraded site without all the improvements that we are trying to put in here, I am quite sure they will all perish, you know, and it will be a total failure. But once you establish the, you know, suitable conditions, then there is a very, very good chance that it will work. <laughs>